This video is on the natural log function integration. Now you may recall the power rule that we had back in chapter 4. And looks like this. x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c as long as n was not equal to negative 1 because that would cause divide by 0. Well, now we have a result for that. And it's going to be the natural log. So we've already learned that the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So therefore, the antiderivative of 1 over x dx would be natural log of the absolute value of x. Technically, the absolute uh, power of x is there just to protect the, to protect the quantity and make sure it's positive because you cannot take the log of anything that's not positive. That includes zero. So now, of course, you know, 1 over x, that's fine, but more likely, most of the time, well, of course, we'll have 1 over x, but more likely we'll encounter a 1 over u, where u is a function of x. So, okay. So 1 over u du will have an antiderivative of a natural log of absolute value of u plus c. Okay. All right, so let's see what we have here. Now the um, same type of basic substitution techniques that, that was in a previous video on integration by substitution still works here. So you look at a problem like this, and you can bring the numerator up, and you can bring the 9 to the outside, and then you let u be what's in the parentheses. So it would be 5 minus 4x, and then du then would be negative 4dx, which makes this be negative 1 fourth du equals dx. And there's the 9, there's a negative 1 fourth. Now we have u to the negative 1, which of course is the same thing as 1 over u. So now that antiderivative will just be natural log of u. We won't use the power rule. We use the power rule for any exponent other than negative 1. So it's negative 9 over 4 ln of u. So then it's negative 9 over 4 ln of absolute value of 5 minus 4x. And of course our plus c. All right, so let's take a look at the next problem. Now, one thing to always keep in mind when you're doing substitution, you never can have, uh, du can never be in the denominator of an integral. So there's, no, there's no, such, no such problem as this, u over du. That is, that is no good. That's bad. So never pick something where you think u is a numerator and then du would be the not denominator. That's impossible. All right. So in this case, we let u be the denominator. Then the derivative is 3x squared minus 6x. But we're looking for x squared minus 2x. That's no problem because this du is exactly a multiple of 3 of that dx. So we multiply both sides by 1 third. So then 1 third du then gives me everything in my numerator that I need. So it works out pretty well. So now you just have 1 third du over u, which is 1 third natural log. And then be 1 third natural log of x cubed minus 3x squared, absolute value, plus c. Now the next one's pretty easy. Let u be the same thing. 9 minus x squared on bottom. So the du is negative 2x dx. So negative one-half du would be x dx. So your numerator is now negative one-half du. You have u on bottom, which you then bring up and make it negative one. Or you can actually just leave it on bottom. You don't have to bring it up. But I always like to bring it up. Uh, so, so negative one-half here comes to the outside. u to the negative one or one over u would just be natural log. So there's your answer, negative one-half natural log of the absolute value of 9 minus x squared plus c. 
Now, one thing you, know, you have to be careful of sometimes when students are first, you know, doing this and learning this technique, they start automatically thinking that, all right, if your U is something in the denominator of a fraction, you're always going to have natural log. That is not true. And we've seen problems like this from integration by substitution, but sometimes people start doing this natural log and they just get that locked in their mind. Now let's look at this integral, for example. The u would be the same, du is the same, so everything's the same here and here, the, the u substitution part for these two integrals. But look what happens when you come over here to rewrite this. That's not u to the negative 1, it's u to the negative 1 half. So if that exponent is anything other than negative 1, it's just a regular power rule. It's not natural log. So it's only when it's u to the negative 1 is it natural log. So you have to be real careful with that. So now you just do a power rule, and you end up with 2u to the 1 half. You got the negative 1 half, so the 2's cancel. So it's the negative of, and you know whether or not you write that as a square root, not important, but uh, 9 minus x squared to the 1 half, or the square root. So watch for that. Don't automatically fall in the trap that everything on the bottom is natural log. So let's look at this next one. Um, let u be the denominator. du is 4x cubed dx. So we divide both sides by 4. So the 5 came out and then the 1 fourth come out. So together they make 5 fourths. So we do have u to the negative 1 du here. So that will be natural log. Stewie jumped in here. I must, uh, Stewie must have seen somebody do this. That's why, you know, most people would know not to do this, but you'd be surprised what we see sometimes. But I, I would think that would be mathematical common sense, but maybe it's not. Well, anyway, go back up here. You get 5 fourths ln of x to the fourth plus 1 plus c. And here's another little Stewie note, and this I've already just got through discussing this, so I'll just leave that there for you to read, but I just explained that a few minutes ago. Not everything in the bottom, with U's in the bottom, it's not always natural log, unless you, you know, raise it up and you make it U to the negative 1. I don't know why you, uh, Stewie used a different color there, so... We'll make Stewie red there again, too. Bring him down a little bit from the other one. All right. Okay. All right, here's another interesting idea. Using division before integrating. Now, the, the way that we'll know to use uh, division, and oftentimes I'll put it in a comment on the question of the test, but that's, that's not a guarantee, but I, I do that most of the time, so I don't want to guarantee that's going to happen. But, but anyway, the way you tell, well, this one actually is a little bit different. Than, well, let's, let's get, I'll, I'll wait and explain that after this example. Well, to integrate this particular problem, then you would split it up. As, since you have one piece on bottom, you split it up as two fractions. So you split that one up. This one's pretty easy. So x cubed over x is just x squared, 2 over x. So then you have 1 third x cubed using the power rule. That one becomes natural log of x. So you have 1 third x cubed plus 2 ln of x, absolute value of x, plus c. Now it gets more interesting when you have to divide by something that's more than just one term there. So here's the criteria for dividing. First of all, they're going to be polynomials, so this won't apply to any kind of radical or anything like that, so it's only polynomials on the top and the bottom. If the uh, numerator exponent is the same power or higher than the one on the bottom, we would have to divide first before we can integrate. So x plus 5 divided by x minus 2, the numerator is the same exponent. So like I said, the, if the top one's greater than or equal to the bottom one we divide. So they're, they're equal. So let's go over here and do a division. We come over here. 
and take the quotient divisor, I believe that's called. Well, anyway, so you have x minus 2, and you just kind of work with the largest terms each time, and then you let the rest of it deal with itself. So you're looking right at this step, you're going, how much does this x go into that x? So basically, it's the x inside the division symbol divided by that x, which makes 1. So just kind of like you would have learned how to do division a long time ago as a little kid. Then you take 1 times x minus 2 and makes that x minus 2. And when you're doing using division, that's always subtraction, so be careful. So obviously when you do the division step, it's important these first two terms are the same because the idea is that largest term cancels. Others may cancel, but that one has to cancel each step. So you're subtracting. So that's why when you get to this step right here, a lot of people would add this together and call that 3, but that's not right. It's 5 minus a minus 2, which makes 7. So 7 is the remainder. And then once the divisor power here of x, that's greater than, there's no power of x there, x is 0, I guess you can argue. But So you, that means you're done. So sometimes there may be more than one division step, but you're definitely done here. All right, so that means 1 is the quotient. I think I called this the quotient. No, okay, yeah. That's the that this divisor. I think this might be called the dividend. I don't know. I get confused on this. But that's, the, okay, that's the quotient, so I was wrong there. And then this is the remainder, but the remainder is 7 divided by the divisor. So that means you're breaking this fraction, x plus 5 over x minus 2. It turns into this right here, 1 plus 7 over x minus 2. And you could check this real easily if you wanted to. You could rewrite 1 as x minus 2 over x minus 2 and add them together. And then you would see it matches this fraction right here. So you could check it if you wanted to. It's not mandatory, but if you're not sure you think you did the division right or not. So then now I'll split this up. As, uh, well, okay, actually I went ahead and integrated. Okay, I integrated part of it. I integrated 1 dx and just wrote x. That's why there's no integral symbol there. But here, I left the integral symbol here. So maybe I should have put the integral, but that's okay. Um, let's see. And so 1 over x minus 2, you'd let u be, I didn't write for, the formal steps here, but u would be x minus 2, and then du is just dx, so it didn't affect anything there. So your final answer would be x plus 7 natural log of x minus 2 plus c. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think I would put this kind of problem on a test, but just in case it was on a quiz or something. I don't want to really go over synthetic division in this interview, I'm sure, in this video. I'm sure someone, uh, you can find a video on synthetic division, explain all that. Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't make you really manually divide that many steps, but it was more just bringing up an algebra technique. Synthetic division works any time that you have x minus something or x plus something. If that was like x squared minus 2, then we could not use this technique right here. Uh, well, anyway, yeah, there's no way I would make you do this kind of problem with this many steps. It's not too bad with synthetic division. But if you didn't know synthetic division, it would be a pain. But once you get it broken down, it's super easy to integrate these pieces. And, you know, they're all easy antiderivatives. And the last one's just natural log. So, and there's the, the minus 8 remainder I get right here is the same as that minus 8 remainder right there. So, but I don't know, just in case you wanted to refresh yourself on synthetic division. Just to see what that's all about. But obviously that, that'll be in the printed notes for you to look at whenever you want to. So even though I didn't go over it. And there's uh, what Maple says. Notice that when Maple does an antiderivative, they don't put, or an integral, they don't put the plus C there. I guess they just assume that the user knows that or whatever. Can't imagine why it would have been that much more difficult to code that in there, but that's okay. But they always, they just don't put this in their intervals.
but they expect us to know it's there. So the maple answer matches my answer. That's all we good. So let's see. So here's a now this one you yeah, there's I'm showing the synthetic division if you want to do it that way. This one actually I did I didn't even do the long division for this one, did I? So oh yeah I did. Down here. So okay. Well I'll run through this real quick for this one then I guess since I did it that way. So you always put the opposite sign, you go back and look in the other one, I did the same thing, X minus two, I used positive two. The reason why we do that is because it allows us to add. Regular long division, you, you must subtract, but this allows us to add. So, this, so x plus 5 means I put negative 5 there. Bring the 1 down. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. You add, makes negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Add down, makes 19. Negative 5 times 19 is negative 95. Add down, you have negative 115. And then the, 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 that's the remainder, and the first three numbers says, so basically you start it out with an x cubed, and you're dividing by an x, that means these first, that's the coefficient starting with x squared. So it makes it 1x squared, right here. The minus 5 produces minus 5x, and then the 19 is the constant 19, and then this would be the remainder, minus 115, divided by the di original divisor. So negative 115 over x plus 5. And then I just kind of showed the steps here, but it's, it's pretty much straightforward natural log. You would have to be careful, let's say, if, let's say if it was like 2x plus 5 on bottom, when you took your du, there would be a 2 there, 2dx, you would, that would produce a 1 half. So, you know, I don't want to take these too casually here, I guess, but uh, you still have to be aware. If you can just look at it and see that Oh, yeah, the DU is going to be 1, so I don't have to worry about it. But that's fine. You wouldn't necessarily have to write it. But I just want to mention, though, that, yeah, you have to be aware of the, uh, if the DU is producing any kind of number there that we have to adjust for. But this one is not. And, of course, the first three are pretty easy. I won't worry about explaining those. And then the last one's a natural log. And plus C. So there we go. Here I did it with division. And this one took three steps, so a little bit tedious. You have to be careful. So basically, you know, I identify the largest two, and x cubed divided by x makes x squared. So then you take x squared and multiply it by both of these. Now, see, I did this on purpose. It's good to have a representative there to line up your terms because it could get confusing otherwise. So the fact this the the original problem here. Skip the x squared. I want to put one ahead and put a zero x squared in there as a placeholder, and I think that's a good idea, especially with what happens in my first step here. So when I go x squared times x plus five, that produces an x cubed. Obviously, those have to be the same because I need to cancel. So then x squared times five is five x squared. So I wanted to have something to line that up with, and if I had to put that zero there. But you got to be careful it's subtraction, so it makes those cancel. So, but that's not positive 5x squared below the line here. It's negative because it's 0 minus 5. And then these two come straight down because 0 is coming from them. So they come straight down. Then the next one, we're looking at how much does x go into negative 5x squared. It would be negative 5x times. So you take negative 5x times x is negative 5x squared. Negative 5x times 5 is negative 25x. We subtract. Those terms cancel. So then I'm going to have 19, positive 19x here. Bring down the negative 20. And now that these are the same power, x and x, that guarantees that you're about to do your last division step. Or any time that you write a, a constant up here. When you write a number up there, that means your division's over. That's your last step. So x goes into 19x 19 times. So we have 19x plus 95. Subtract. Those cancel. Negative 20 minus 95 is negative 115. 
and then you're finished. So now I won't finish the rest of the problem because we already finished it up there. But the, there's your quotient right there on top in the light blue, and here's your remainder over the divisor. Same thing, okay? So we've basically done that problem. Now here's a new one. Now you could not use synthetic division on this one because it's x squared. Anything other than x. So we have to use long division on this one. So x squared goes into x cubed x times. x times x squared minus 5 makes this a negative x cubed. And there, so I bring this over, makes that a negative 5x. So I line it up right here. Once again, we're subtracting. Those cancel. Negative 4x squared comes down. But this is negative 4x minus a minus 5x. So it's really plus. So it makes it positive 1x. And then the 20 comes down. So now we have x squared goes into negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times right here. So negative 4 times x squared minus 5 makes it uh, negative 4x squared plus 20. And this, just, this is just coincidence here that the 20s happen to cancel. The only thing that had to happen was the first term had to cancel. That just happened to also cancel. And the only thing it left was x. So your remainder is x divided by x squared minus 5. So here's your quotient, x minus 4. So here's uh, the fraction, or the, the, the integral we're now integrating x minus 4 plus x over x squared minus 5. So the first two are easy enough. It'd just be 1 half x squared and a minus 4x. This integral here, you let u equal x squared minus 5 du then would be 2x. So we have to divide both sides by 2, which makes 1 half du equals x dx. And then we got, there we go, so it just turns into a natural log right there, but now we have a one-half in front of it. So there are those first two terms right brought down here, and then we have just one-half natural log of the absolute value of x squared minus 5, and then our plus c. Terrific. So now it takes care of the division. So now we're just looking at random other, well, until we get to the trig intervals coming up here. So let's take a look at this one. A lot of times with integration, it takes a little bit of imagination getting it set up properly. So that's why it's, you know, it's, it might not always be difficult to do once you know how to do it, but sometimes the setup can be a little challenging. So because this is ln of x cubed, which I, uh, in the video, in the natural log function of differentiation, I, I made a point of clarifying that, you know, whenever the arguments raised to a power that allows the coefficient to come the exponent to come down as a coefficient which I then immediately brought outside now it's a little tricky to see what's going on up here you might you know that's what that's why they have erasers you know you can do something and start over what I did is I just to make it easier to see I brought the x up and then rewrote that as 1 over x and then we have natural log of x here and then what that does is it makes it easier to see what happens here because then it fits pretty well. Because at first it might look kind of confusing on what to do, but then if you let u equal natural log of x, then you have du equals 1 over x dx, so now you can see it fits perfectly. It might have been harder to see with that x on bottom, but when the x comes up, that's how you see it fits perfectly now. So now you have one-third du over u, so it's one-third natural log of u, so it ends up being one-third natural log of the absolute value of natural log of x, because that's your u. So it's a natural log of the natural log. That is correct. Plus c. Excellent. Now, a little bit different here. What if the ln of x is all raised to the third power? Well, the same idea, I guess I didn't actually show the 1 over x coming up to the top, but all right, well, pretend it did like this. Pretend like I said 1 over x. I wonder if I can make room for that. Well, 1 over x on top, and then the ln of x all cubed. The key thing is the 3 does not come down here. So it doesn't make the problem that difficult, as long as you know that. And this is the same as this right here. Everything's the same. But now, instead of du over u, we have du over u cubed. That's the only difference. And that also means then this will not be natural log because 
it's not to the first power on bottom. So you bring it up, du over u cubed, you bring it up, that's negative 3, not negative 1. So therefore, we use a power rule. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Oh, yeah, there's, there's the, in other words, this is the antiderivative of this right here. So you end up with um, a negative 1 half from this negative 2 on bottom, negative 1 half, and then ln of x raised to the negative 2, which that's fine, but you might also see it, you know, written like this, where it had uh, negative 1 over 2 ln of x squared on bottom. You know, obviously, you don't have to do that, but... If you're looking at something that's in a multiple choice format, you know, that might be the way the answer looks. So, but that's no big deal. That should be, for a calculus student, that should not be an issue to look at that and pick the right answer. Whether it be a quiz or an exam. But when I do this uh, handwritten, I don't mind that uh, if you leave it as negative. Integrals of the six basic trig functions. Well, we've looked at the derivatives of the trig functions. And then antiderivatives of certain trig functions, like for example, if we know we know the derivative of tan is sec squared, then they, we probably saw that the antiderivative of sec squared is tan. But we have not literally taken taken the uh, all six of the standard trig functions and shown their antiderivatives. That's because four of them have natural log in their answer. That's why we have not seen these before. In other words, we know the antiderivative of sec squared is tangent, but until now we weren't aware of what the antiderivative of sec secant by itself is. So these are all on the formula sheet that I have for the uh, third exam and the final. They all involve natural logs, and you know I just did a couple of a couple of them here. They're not that hard to derive, actually. Uh, here's tangent. If you just rewrite tangent as sine over cosine, and you let u be cosine, and you might we talked about this before. Because remember, I mentioned that you don't have a choice when they're multiplied sine times cosine. You would actually have a choice, as long as well, unless one of them is raised to a power, then you have to then that's your u. But here, you, there's no choice because the du, as I said earlier, can never be on the bottom. You can't have an integral with like u over du. So anyway, that means it has to be cosine, so du is on top. So you end up with uh, the negative sine of x, so that makes it negative du equals sine x dx. So you have negative du over u, which is uh, negative natural log of cosine of x plus c. Now I wrote, a, this is the way that this book, this Larson book, does it this way. I've actually seen this, I think it was the Stewart book, I could be wrong, but I've seen it written this way, which actually is correct because what happens is, if you use log properties and you brought this negative back up here to the top, negative 1, that would be then mean you're saying cosine raised to the negative 1. So it would be 1 over cosine, so it then turns into secant. But we'll just use, you know, my test and everything will be designed to look like negative natural log of cosine because that's the formula to be given. But natural log of, of secant for this answer is, is correct. So you can, you know, there's, you can there's, see derivations for any of those four. They're not that bad. Well, I, these top two are a little tricky because you have to, uh, uh, I'm not going to work it out since you're not, I'm not expecting you to do it, but I'll just tell you. For the sequence, you have to take, the, maybe the book has or somewhere would have it, multiply top and bottom by seek plus tan. You have to do a little extra step there of seek times tan on top and bottom, and then it works out. And then you let u be the denominator, and then it works. So it's not like it's a lot of steps or anything, but that could be a tricky first step to figure out, you know, if you weren't sure. It's kind of like, getting, yeah, once you see it, you go, oh, okay. But figuring it out would have been challenging. All right, seek of x over 2. u is x over 2. That means du is 1 half dx. So bring, divide by 1 half brings it to 2 on this side. So 2du equals dx. And then, so it so basically ends up being just 2 integral of secant u. So now we, you know, use these results right there. So it's natural log of sec plus tan, so it's 2. 
natural log C plus 10, and then of course X over 2. Let's try the next one. Both these have the same U here. They're both 2X. So if U is 2X, DU is 2DX. So 1 half DU would be DX. So it applies to both of them. So you can leave it. I mean, you can make them separate integrals if you're more comfortable. But actually, you can, since they're sharing the same U, you can keep them together like this. So the antiderivative of secant of U, we just saw is natural log of secant plus tan. The antiderivative of tan is natural log of cosine. So it'll be minus ln of cosine of u. And then just substitute the u back in there. The u is 2x. And then don't forget our plus c. And there we have our answer right there. Okay. Now here's one with a definite integral. Now we saw this kind of integral earlier. That had a cube, so it means a three comes out. So, this, okay, so this, this kind of integral we've seen. So just let u be ln of x and du is one over x dx. And then, like I said, uh, with integration by substitution for definite integrals, I showed you how to change your limits of integration to make it more convenient. So if you put e squared in there, natural log of e squared happens to work out as two. And we'll talk about another video that. You know, natural log and E are inverse functions of each other, so they kind of cancel each other out and leave the exponent. Uh, the natural log of E would be 1. So now our integral just becomes from 1 to 2, du over u, which would then be because it's, because it's u to the first on bottom, so it would be natural log of u, 2 and 1, ln of 2 minus ln of 1. And ln of 1 just happens to be 0, so that's the same. ln of 2 minus ln of 1 is the same thing as just ln of 2. Very good. All right, now, you know, so it takes a little imagination here. Not too much, because like I said, you can never let, you know, you can't let you be on top of the DU on bottom. So if you look at it, the first thing you do is start with that. If it doesn't work, you try something else. You let U be cotangent, and this is where you have to know the derivative of cotangent. So you have to know your trig derivatives to then be able to do trig antiderivatives. So if u is cotangent, du is negative uh, cosecant squared dx. So we have to move the negative over to the other side. So it just means the entire numerator now is just negative du. And I realized for some reason I didn't mean to switch the variable from t to x. I mean, there's nothing wrong with variable t. I don't, I'm not going to change it, though, but should, I should have written this as t. I don't know what happened. Yeah, you're not, you shouldn't just automatically change it to x. All right, so that's kind of a minor, uh, it's a mistake on my part, but fortunately a minor mistake. Doesn't affect the, you know, calculus of the problem or anything. And then we have the negative, so then we just have there's du over u. So you have du over u, which is negative natural log of u, which technically is negative natural log of cotangent. That's correct, and that's fine. But look what Maple did. Maple kind of used that same thing I was explaining to you a minute ago. If you put this, if you brought this negative back up using property of logs, the reciprocal function of cotangent is tangent. Oh, and which I, okay, there, I wrote, I wrote it all out right there on the bottom. So you can look at that anytime you want to. So the point of my story is both of those answers are correct, mine and the Maple. All right, this looks like fun, heating something up here. Cal 2, we looked at something called Newton's Law of Cooling. But this is, so this is, you're not having to set up anything here. It's like giving you the uh, integral. So what this, what this integral is doing is um, it, it sets it up. It has it set up for you. It's going from 300 to 250. How long will it take? And like I said, you, you see this. Newton's law of cooling, possibly, but uh, if you take Cal 2, but I, I will tell you that the 100 
represents the temperature of the room that you're in introducing the object. You know, when you pull something out, whatever its temperature is, if you're, it's going to cool faster if it's in a, you know, cooler environment. All right, so this one got a big so that yeah, it looks kind of complicated, but it really isn't. You just let yeah, uh, u equal t minus 100, so du is just dt. And then I change the limits of integration, so if it's t minus 100, u of 300 then would equal 200, and u of 250 would equal 150. And then now my integral becomes there's 10 to 10 over ln of 2 that was in the original problem. And now I have 200 on top, 150 on bottom, so it's du over u. So then it'd be ln, so that's why I skipped a step there, but du over u is ln of u. And then I uh, just put in 200 and put in 150. That's, that's good enough. I mean, if we're looking for what we call an exact answer, that's correct. Uh, you, you know, you could use log properties and type, you know, you can make this because of subtraction, it's the same thing saying natural log of 200 over 150, you know, like this. And then yeah, that's just, you don't have to do that. I'm just telling you. Like if you were ever checking an answer and you saw it, sometimes they'll simplify. And then that's also then, that's the same thing as ln of 4 over 3. That would reduce to 4 thirds. So, but not necessary. I just want to show you that. That answer is good enough. And then, you know, if we, if we like exact answers, that's right. This grins. I was interested in getting a decimal approximation of this and you see I put it in the calculator and so it's saying it's taking about 4.15 minutes for that thing to go from 300 to 250 in a 100 degree environment. So that concludes the video for natural log function integration.